Good evening, everybody. It's Tuesday, August the 29th, and we are coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. This will be one of the last, uh, I keep wanting to say Gainesville and Galveston. Gainesville and Galveston. So. Good evening, everybody. It's Tuesday, August the 29th. We're coming to you from Gainesville, Florida, where we'll be staying the night and then heading out in the early morning hours to intercept the hurricane, which is now a Category 2 storm. Should be a Category 3 storm at landfall. Uh, there's some small indications that may flirt with Category 4 status, but we'll get into that in a little bit later on. Uh, this is one of the visible satellites uh, here. Images of the hurricane really got organized quite a bit today. Uh, should continue to rapidly organize and increase in intensity throughout the overnight hours and come ashore, unfortunately, as an intensifying hurricane, uh, which is always a worser case when they're intensifying at landfall as opposed to weakening. Um, so we'll go through some of the latest on uh, the hurricane uh, down in here. As of the uh, 5 p.m. Eastern update, uh, now has winds of 100 miles per hour. Uh, the pressure is down to 972 millibars and the forward speeds picked up a little bit it's now moving north at 16 miles per hour and uh, should be up here again right around uh, daybreak uh, tomorrow morning maybe a little bit after sunset maybe a little bit before uh, but that's kind of the idea for in terms of landfall and today uh, we can actually pick it up on radar uh, here it is on radar uh, very classic uh, hurricane signature there uh, with the banding and the eye down in here. Again, we're up here in Gainesville. So if we go and measure our distance from the storm, it looks like we are from the eye about 240 miles and then roughly about 250 miles to the center of the storm there. Uh, so still um, at least uh, 12 hours, if not longer before landfall and it'll probably make landfall, um, well, it will make landfall to our west. Um, we're going to uh, travel back up to our west uh, tomorrow and set up somewhere in between Tallahassee and Gainesville as the uh, current direct kind of brings it up and then kind of east of Tallahassee here as it kind of comes up in that general direction that's not the official track I'm just drawing on there we'll go over and take a look at uh, the official track on the uh, National Hurricane site so um, let's see the latest track well here's the model ensemble so there's still a little bit of a spread on the model ensembles they've come into a lot closer agreement because we're close to landfall again uh, here's the 24 hour period. Can't really see the little 24s under there because of all the models grouped close together. Uh, and then there's 48 back here and 48 out here. So uh, still a little, that model's a little slower. So we're probably not even going to mess with that one. But generally out in this area, uh, two days from now and in a day from when this outlook was issued uh, here um, not too long ago. So it looks like um, the track, again, the spread isn't as far, but there still is a little bit of uncertainty um, on where it's going to make landfall. Uh, but the area it's making landfall is pretty uh, rural. Uh, there are some communities, uh, but for the most part, it's making uh, landfall in a pretty unpopulated area with a lot of more uh, farmland and swampland in the uh, armpit area of Florida there, that big bend area so we'll go back and look at the official track uh, now this is the interactive map on the national hurricane center uh, you can zoom in and see in a little bit more detail underlying this track uh, where it's going to pass um, here on this map you can see uh, tallahassee is out here on the left side uh, this would be the cone of uncertainty here uh, this blue I'm trying to draw straight with the mouse is impossible and the eastern side here uh, with kind of the center of the track here all wobbly and then Gainesville where we're at over here so that kind of gives you reference of the track before we zoom in a little bit further um, try to zoom in a little bit more on this 
So it looks like you go in here and zoom in. Uh, Perry is right here. Looks like the official center currently as it stands, um, if it doesn't wobble west or east, would be kind of east of Perry there. Uh, Salem area uh, right down, um, maybe out in this area. So looks like pretty uh, still uh, communities there. Uh, Perry's a decent sized town. We traveled through that today. Um, we left Tallahassee. And what we did is kind of um, came down. Actually, we'll switch over to the southern map. Uh, left Tallahassee, came down through here, uh, checked out all the towns along this route, and then came out here to Cedar uh, Key out here and uh, shot some video of um, the, some of the preparations and mandatory evacuations down there. Uh, it looks like they'll get some of the worst of the storm surge down in that area. Unfortunately, uh, most of the town uh, will probably be underwater tomorrow, um, along with some areas uh, along the coast northwest up here. Um, so it looks like just generally the worst storm surge, if the track is accurate on the center of that circulation coming in there, just east of Perry, uh, the worst storm surge should be in there uh, with the center of the track was kind of like in there so this will all be strong winds near the eye wall uh, with the onshore flow so that will definitely push that water inland and uh, be a bad um, area or a bad recipe for um, storm surge down there in Cedar Key and uh, there's another area in there um, let's see if it will show up on this map uh, down Horseshoe Beach, uh, there's Cedar Key, um, definitely a uh, surge could come up all this river all the way up to uh, Fanning Sp Springs here and flood this area uh, across Highway uh, 27 it looks like, State 19 there, um, I guess that's 19 slash 27. Uh, uh, this town here will be another area, um, looks like a pretty small community there. Uh, but another area that should see a uh, really bad inundation of water uh, there with the storm surge. Let me zoom in a little bit closer there. Uh, looks like pretty small area, but still um, people have homes and livelihoods there uh, where the water will be coming in and inundating that area tomorrow. So uh, we'll go back. Um, over to this uh, look at this satellite loop you can really see uh, how a lot of the thunderstorm activity is blown up around the center uh, circulating around the storm uh, the storm still continuing to intensify and should be a dangerous category 3 storm at landfall um, here's the latest intensity models uh, showing landfall kind of this is going out in time down here in the bottom should have explained that the other day when I was showing that map um, but anyway, 12 hours out, 24 hours out, and so forth. Um, then you're looking at wind speeds over here, 20, 35, all the way up into 110 mile per hour, or knots, sorry. Um, so a lot of these models are still kind of getting it up into this low end category three, high uh, category two strength. Um, you can see a lot of the models have this rapid intensification of it up until landfall, landfall, here in about 12 hours, so that's why uh, the strength decreases after landfall. Uh, but if we take all that clutter off of there, uh, we can see here that there's a few of these models that kind of keep it around the same, but I don't think that's going to be the case. The general consensus is for this thing to strengthen all the way up to landfall here, this being landfall, and then once it's inland, uh, the wind speeds uh, really taper off to where by 36 hours, um, this is a low end tropical storm uh, type situation. So there's one more map in intensity. Um, this is mainly just the discussion here with the uh, National uh, Hurricane Center. Um, so forecast discussion. If you look at this and scroll all the way down, uh, we're looking at the wrong thing now. Maybe go down to our hurricane. So the forecast discussion. 
still. Uh, looks like they've uh, kind of bumped it down a little bit. Uh, they did have this up to 125 earlier, so they're back down to 115 with the latest outlook. But that's still a Category 3 there at a landfall. So looking at a Category 3 landfall uh, along the um, Florida coast uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be out uh, pretty early, uh, probably get up well before daybreak, uh, head west a little bit, and start up the live stream. So uh, definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, select the notification so you get notified when we do go live stream tomorrow. Probably be around 7 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 6 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Uh, sunrise is about 7 a.m. out here and uh, we'll probably start streaming around uh, first light so anyway if you live in Florida uh, especially down here along the coast definitely I hope uh, you're taking this seriously and evacuated some of these communities down in here they're gonna get some of the most intense storm surge and then uh, we'll stay safe uh, everybody out there in the path of this thing stay safe and we'll see you tomorrow on the live stream Thanks for tuning in. Bye.